Hey, 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 we got a treat for you today. We're going to give you the full guide on what to do in a little trip in Detroit, whether you're here for some sort of event. Maybe Detroit is one city on your road trip, or you just want to visit Detroit and you only got a few days to do it. We're going to talk about all that. Even if you're going to stay a bit longer, we're going to talk about so many different things. You're going to add all those things to your regimen and have a fun time here in the Motor City. We're going to talk about transportation, try to save you a bunch of money on that. So whether you're coming in the winter or the summer or anything in between, we're going to talk about different things you can do in those situations. What are the main things to do here? We're going to give you some main recommendations. Also throw in a little niche things, the food to eat, places to avoid as well. So we're going to wrap all that up. Hope you enjoy and stick to the end to learn all the details. All right. So the idea for this video actually came up because there was an event that I went to, and you know what that is if you've seen my last couple of videos. I was like, well, I'm trying to help these people learn a little bit about Detroit so they can have a more enjoyable time here. What is the best way to do that? Probably do a, just a full on video guide on <laughs> everything that has to do with that. So we're gonna try and mold some sort of concoction that's gonna be a fun few days here in Detroit. Maybe if you're even here for a lot longer, I'm gonna talk about so many things here add all those things to your list, anything that's interesting. So I'm not really going to be talking about the suburbs, although there will be a couple of things that I will point out just because they are very close. A lot of these things are either free or very low in cost. For a lot of this, you are not going to need a car. Sometimes it might be better to have one, but the great thing about Detroit, being a tourist here in Detroit, is that in like the downtown core, it's like a two, three, four mile radius where like 85, 90% of the things you want to do in Detroit are all right there. It's very convenient in that sense. I live in Detroit. That is more so my expertise. I also encourage you to check the description of this video because I'm sure a lot of people are going to have other recommendations or maybe more information, people who are native to Detroit or people who have visited Detroit before. And I know my subscribers have been pretty good at this, at adding information to the conversation, at least in the past few videos, you'll probably see a lot of them add their recommendations as well. So without further ado, let's talk about the first thing, which is going to be transportation. So I mentioned it already, but the great thing is that there's so many different attractions all in a very small area. The downtown core is at the most southern point of the city, okay? And then also south of the downtown core is going to be the Detroit River, which is the border between the US and Canada. So on the other side of the, the Detroit River is going to be Windsor, Ontario, Canada. A few things to note here in terms of transportation. I'll leave links in the description to give you more up-to-date information, whether you're watching this, you know, a month from now, in a year or multiple years out, November 2022 at this point. Let's start with the people mover, okay? Uh, it's like a train in the sky that goes around in sort of a loop to downtown locations, okay? So like one stop is at like Huntington Place, which is the convention center. So maybe you're going to an event over there. And then another stop is like the GM Renaissance Center, which we'll talk about later on. Was just free, but it just became not free. The one-way trip on there is 75 cents, so very cheap. The one caveat is that it is closed on Sundays. So you're going to be able to get around to many different locations, depending on what you're interested interested in around the downtown area with the people mover and it's going to save a lot of time and then there's also the Q line which is a streetcar okay that goes north on Woodward Avenue at the moment it doesn't go all the way north to the like the suburbs or anything but it does go north from the downtown core through Midtown through you know up to New Center for the Q line it is free until the end of 2022, but check on the website also if you're not doing this in 2022. All right, so that's kind of like the downtown core into the little north corridor, which uh, is a lot of kind of where the attractions are. Like you'll be able to use the queue line to go up north to get to museums if that's sort of your thing. Then there's also the bus. The bus is going to get you everywhere else for four hours it costs two dollars i think for a full day it's going to cost four dollars if you are going to plan on using the bus whether that's getting out east to belle isle which we'll talk about or getting somewhere else in the city um, or potentially to the closer suburbs then you can use the bus okay there's other options obviously you can rent a car you can use zipcar turo um, uber lyft all these sort of things i'm just trying to tell you about the public transportation because that is going to be the cheapest way 
it may not be the most time efficient way, at least for the bus. Like if you're trying to go outside or all the way to the suburbs, yeah, like you're probably gonna need to rent a car or if it's just like one location and then you're just coming back, maybe an Uber or Lyft will get the job done for that. If you are gonna use the bus, download the Dart app. Let me just show them the app that you paid for the tickets. There's also rentable bikes and scooters. A lot downtown, but also other places in the city that you can, I think, just download the app and unlock them from there. You want to make sure that there's a drop-off location when you are going to be done using it. So I'm going to give you a rough sketch of the itinerary that you can do. If this is all helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up and, and subscribe if you want to see more about Detroit. Also, other places when I visit, hopefully soon, I don't know, man. But when I think of attractions for Detroit, I'm going to give you four things, okay? The Detroit Riverwalk. So that is the first thing. That's like the main draw to me. It's back-to-back -back raining best river walk in the country. It's really cool because it's overlooking the Windsor, Ontario, Canada skyline. And it's just a nice walk, probably pretty busy if it's more summer months that you're going in the winter. It's probably not very busy at all, at least when I was there in the winter. In the center of the river walk, there's like Hart Plaza. If you were in Detroit like 10 years ago, it's not at all the same. I guess I should probably mention that. Like Detroit is on a comeback. Any of the things that I talk about that might be the best things to do, might not be in that top three, top five discussion five, 10 years down the road, just because there's so many new things popping up. I would say it's a nice place to get the backdrop of like Canada in the background, also the water. So nice place to take pictures. That could be kind of your first stop. Like once you get there, if it's light out, then yeah, go ahead, take some pictures at the river walk, go walk it, you know, just enjoy the outdoors. Uh, before you get settled into wherever your hotel is at. So the second thing that comes to mind for me is Belle Isle Park. The size is bigger than Central Park in New York City, also in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. On the water in the Detroit River, technically part of Detroit, you have to take a bridge to get there. This is just like a massive park. It also has some facilities, indoor activities, and a Whitcomb Conservatory, uh, Belle Isle Aquarium, Dawson Great Lakes Museum, Nature Center, I believe. And there's a beach there. If you're driving in, you need to pay for a Michigan State Park passport or something like that. If you walk, bike in, it's free to go in, all right? There's also the conservatory, which I do recommend. That is also something that is free to go in. I have footage for Belle Isle. If you're more interested on Belle Isle, I will be making those videos sometime soon. And there is like a Belle Isle bus kind of. It doesn't go all the way like to the east side, but it does get you to all the main little attractions. And I think it gets you pretty close, if not right next to the beach that is there. So if you're gonna be in Detroit in the summer, that's gonna be your swimming spot. If you do have a car or maybe you can rent a bike, bring it in. If you wanna just bike around the island, you could spend the full day if you really want to. It's something if you're into the outdoors, you gotta see when you're in Detroit. The third thing I'm gonna say is like kind of like a must say thing. As an indoor activity, the GM Renaissance Center. Because everyone knows that Detroit is known for the auto industry. What's a better place than go to the world headquarters for General Motors? It has like restaurants and there's a hotel there. You can kind of look around. They have like cars in there. There's other auto things you can do like the Ford Pickett Museum, Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn. You want to see something about cars? Go ahead, look at GM Renaissance Center. Another note though, on the Ford side of things, there is the Michigan Central Station, which is one of my favorite buildings in the world. They are renovating that place, so I actually have no clue what it's gonna be like on the inside. That might be another place that you can go. And then my fourth thing, visit a museum. Which one? I would probably say Detroit Historical Museum because that's gonna tell you a lot of history about Detroit, and I think that Detroit does have a very valuable and rich history, formerly a huge powerhouse of a city, the decay and like what actually happened to it. And a lot of issues that are exemplified in Detroit are issues we see across the entire country, potentially even the entire world. There's a bunch of like cool little um, exhibits there as well. And I, I do want to check that out when I get the chance. And be sure to check prices. The Detroit Historical Museum is like $10 for adults. Be sure to check days that these places are open so you don't show up and be like, Oh man, we got like the De Detroit Institute of Arts, we've got the Detroit Contemporary Art Museum, the African American Museum, we got the Motown Museum, African Bead Museum, all right, Ford Pickett Museum, like I mentioned. Greenfield Village is like an outdoor 
old-timey reenactment sort of thing uh, in Dearborn, which is pretty close, so you will you would be able to take a bus. You have the Michigan Science Center, you have the Outdoor Adventure Center, Arab American Museum, which is also in Dearborn. If at any point you just went like, Tick! oh wow, that sounds interesting. Well, okay, maybe that is one of the museums. Maybe if you have time for one or two museums, I think that's a good way to maybe do an indoor activity if you're there when it's colder, or just to learn something because, well, that's always cool to do. There's also Fort Wayne. Greenfield Village is closed in the winter, I believe, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about hangout spots slash neighborhoods that you may want to visit, whether this is for food or whether this is just to walk around, or if you're very into nightlife, these are the places that you want to go. So you can obviously walk around downtown, you've got Midtown, you've got Greek Town, you've got Cork Town, <laughs> Southwest Detroit, and Mexican Town for a more like Mexican influenced culture. Ham Tramic, which is a city within the city in Detroit. You can go along like Warren Avenue in Dearborn, because this is something that is unique to Detroit in terms of the entire West, like Detroit is the Arab capital of the West or specifically Dearborn. So you're gonna get food from like Yemen, from Lebanon. You'll see Arabic on signs above like markets or restaurants or whatever. If that's something you've never seen before, which I hadn't seen before I moved here, go ahead and check that sort of thing out. I would say like Greek Town, there's the Hollywood Casino over there. Like, like there's kind of a casino culture in Detroit. There's MGM, there's the Motor City Casino, and then there's Hollywood casino in Greek Town. I think Greek Town is always popping, I would say. It's not like my sort of thing to do, to go out and whatever, I don't know. I don't know what people do. Like that is like the go-to place for like nightlife. And I mean, it doesn't even have to be night when you go there, you know, find a restaurant over there. If you want to be close to downtown or if you want to go up north a little bit to Midtown, Corktown is also close. And speaking of food, what kind of food is Detroit known for? Well, number one, you could say Detroit style pizza. Number two, you could say Coney Island restaurants or the Coney Dog. If you are in Detroit, if you go around Detroit and you don't find yourself near a Coney Island restaurant, you must be the most elusive specimen the world has ever seen because I can't seem to walk a few feet without seeing a Coney Island restaurant. Very inexpensive. That's about the most inexpensive food you can find. Food from Arab-speaking countries, Yemeni, Lebanese, okay? Like I said, the Mexican influence is gonna be in Mexican town or Southwest Detroit. There are the famous Coney Island restaurants right downtown, Lafayette and American Coney. Lafayette at the moment is shut down. Let's just say Remy the Rat dropped a little something on the floor that they weren't supposed to drop, if you know what I mean. People have done like taste tests from both restaurants. There's also Mom Spaghetti, so shout out Eminem. Marshall Mathers, one of the greatest of all time in terms of the rapping game from Detroit, so his restaurant is here. There's a few things to do with architecture if you are interested in that. There's the Guardian Building, Fisher Building, Michigan Central Station, if that's back up in Running, go ahead and take a peek inside that. There's the Detroit Masonic Temple, which is the largest in the world. And if you're looking for more architecturally sound houses, uh, many of the brick houses are so beautiful uh, around Detroit. But if you want to take a look at like old Detroit mansions and take a peek at the Boston Edison District, just north of New Center, which you might be at for one of these attractions. So if you want to stroll through there, you could take the bus and just walk around if you want. So there's actually a lot of things I can't discuss just because I don't want this video to be like, oh, I don't know, like 40,000 hours long. But I will say there's all the sports stadiums are right there downtown. So if you're going to a game, that's something you can do. There's the Fox Theater right next to the sports stadiums as well. Um, Opera House. There's so much that I don't even know about that is just crazy. Never been to Canada? Hop across the border and want to take the tunnel or the Ambassador Bridge or maybe by the time you're watching this video the new bridge has come up. If you're into music there's a bunch of like music festivals. One of them I went to which was the... well I didn't go to. I just went by it, <laughs> which was the Movement Electronic Music Festival earlier on, I think like end of May. The Motown Museum, like I mentioned, if you know what Motown is, one of the most successful record companies, uh, you know, back late 60s and early 70s, started in Detroit. And so all of that is to say that there's plenty of stuff to do. I'm literally g just getting tired talking for this video because it's actually been a long time. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I didn't even tell you anything about Detroit. Detroit is known for crime as well. So what places 
should you avoid? Well, most of the places I mentioned, if not all of them, on this list, you can pretty much go to, and you can walk around downtown uh, at night, midtown, all these sort of places, because that's what you're supposed to do. The thing I will say, and I'll try to summarize it in the best way that I can, which is don't go somewhere where there's no reason for you to be there. Because if there's a reason for you to be there, like it's one of these attractions, it's probably a-okay. Obviously, the normal safety cautiousness applies anywhere in the world but like if you're in a random place that you don't need to be especially at night just don't i mean i've been to the quote-unquote worst of the worst neighborhoods in the the city during the day but nothing happens then again like you don't have to go there if you want to see some blight go ahead something you can do is go to the heidelberg project which is an outdoor art exhibit that i did go to you can kind of see around that area that there's a lot of empty lots maybe some beat up or abandoned houses. You know, maybe you have never seen anything like that. Go ahead, see it firsthand. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you feel a little different as a whole. Like, go see something besides downtown. If you're gonna stay, like, I don't think you should stay in just downtown. If you just go downtown, we're not seeing Detroit. You know, Detroit is much more than downtown. Yeah, obviously you're gonna spend most of your time there, but go to one of the places that I mentioned, whether that's like Southwest Detroit or whether that's like around Hamtramck, maybe you're going to Belle Isle, which is closer to the east side, go somewhere along like Jefferson Avenue to eat for lunch or dinner or whatever. Oh, another one might be to like go up north near Palmer Park, which is a really nice park. If you wanna go hop over to the su northern suburbs, the Detroit Zoo is right up there as well, so. All right, so now I'm gonna try and give you a slight little itinerary that you can do, okay? So since the Detroit People Mover is closed on Sunday, I want you to utilize the People Mover because I think it's a very good tool and in going to, you know, tr attractions back to back to back to back, whatever, and being able to do that. So I would say probably Let's say you're coming in on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday sort of situation. I'd leave probably Sunday for maybe a situation where you're going to use the bus. So whether you want to go to Belle Isle, if, if the weather is good, if you want to be outside um, for a long period of time, that could be like your Sunday, you know? Let's talk about Belle Isle. That Let's say it's your Sunday, okay? So Belle Isle, go to Belle Isle. Do whatever you got to do. Like uh, enjoy the scenery, okay? Go Maybe go swimming if it's hot. If it's... If it's more cold, you just want to go around, maybe ride your rentable bikes or whatever you want to do. Go inside the conservatory, go, go to the aquarium, then come out of Belle Isle, maybe get some lunch somewhere along Jefferson Avenue. Go to the Heidelberg Project, which is pretty close by, um, on the east side over there, and see the outdoor exhibit. And at that point, you can pretty much head back towards the downtown core, assuming you're probably staying somewhere around there. Take the night out at your choice of the GM Renaissance Center, Greek Town, Midtown, wherever you want to go. First day when you do get in, let's say your Friday, like I mentioned, the downtown, the Riverwalk, you can walk north from there to go to Campus Marshes Park. If it is winter, there will be ice skating out there, so you can ice skate if that's your short day, if you're getting in and that's you only have a little bit of time. Finish off by just going to your hotel and doing whatever. You know, do the Coney Island, like American Coney downtown, all right? Do a couple museums. I mean, there's like three, four, five different museums that are up around Midtown and where like Wayne State University is. And if you want to take Q-Line a bit further north, there will be the Fisher Building in New Center. You can even go kind of off like Grand Boulevard a little bit west to the Motown Museum, African Bee Museum, which is actually um, kind of an underrated attraction, I would say. Get a souvenir, a little necklace or something like that that you can take home. Some of that stuff is actually imported from Africa. I hope that this has kind of helped you to get an idea of the things you can do in Detroit if you are there just for a short amount of time. And if you want to knock out every single one of the things I said, that would be amazing as well. I'm not close to being done with that, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I could do a list on ranking every single attraction in Detroit. That'd be funny. Let me know if, in the comments if you want to see something like that. Make sure you do your research on each step you take at each place you're going to go. Information can change and, you know, it's worthwhile to do a little bit extra. That's kind of what you have to do when you're traveling. A little extra effort to hopefully, you know, make a wonderful experience. I hope uh, you learned a whole bunch. Uh, if you're going to be taking a trip to Detroit or if you want to sound off in the comments, what are your favorite things to do here? Let me know in the land and in the hope to see you next time. And the comeback is real. So a lot more to offer 
in Detroit if you're watching this sometime in the future. So yeah, subscribe. The last thing I didn't mention, uh, if you want to go to like a Detroit gift shop, look up Pure Detroit. That being said, I'll see you on the next video. <laughs>